Hello! In this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the basics of using effect layers in Bridge. I will create an artwork with multiple image and effect layers. For effect layers I will go through the settings, I will show you how to combine two or more of them together, and I will create one from scratch without using the templates. Let's go ahead and jump into it. The effect layer inside Bridge Editor is a system designed to simulate things like rain, clouds or flames, sparkles, and more. You can give your photos at home some cool effect like this one. Change the position of the effect layer and customize it. Save your artwork and experience it through the Artivive app. You can also combine them with 3D objects. In the 3D editor, we have recently introduced Library. Click on the icon up here. It will open a dialog with multiple 3D objects. Let's click on that one. It will automatically load to your scene. As you can see here on the left, there is a folder containing a 3D object and an effect layer. This effect layer was created in Bridge. By customizing the settings on the right, you can create almost anything. I set up this scene in the 3D editor. It has multiple image layers and now it will start adding the effect layers. Click on the icon up here. This is the default one. And by clicking here, you can choose between various pre-made templates. I will select the sparkles. Here on the right, we have all the settings of this template and we can customize each one of them to match our desired effect. I will start by resizing the shape by changing the X, Y, and Z values simply by dragging left or right. Notice how the shape in the scene became bigger and the effect layer will be spawned inside of it. The next thing I would like to change is the lifetime. The lifetime means the active duration of a single effect image. As you can see, I have two values. Let's type 0.2 here, which means some of the effect images will disappear after 0.2 seconds. And let's change this to 1, meaning others will disappear after 1 second. Having two values gives the effect more diversity. Now I will change the start size, meaning the starting size of each effect image. I have two values again, let's change the first one to 0.03, meaning some of them will be spawned at that size, and the second value to 1.5. Notice how the sparkles became smaller in our scene. Same thing for the start color values. Click on the color here and it will open the color wheel. Choose any value and click on select. I will do the same for the other color. Notice how now some of the effect images are almost white and others are lighter yellow. Let's look at the effect image textures. Click on the small image right here and it will open this dialog. You can switch with any of those. Let's select that one. The texture image I have selected is now spawned in my scene. For my artwork, I prefer the previous texture, so I will quickly just change it back. Here on the bottom, you have the advanced settings. I want to look at the effect type. Now I have billboard. Move to this side of the scene and notice how the texture images are following the camera. Now click on the drop down icon here and we have these three options. Let's select none and move again to the side of the scene. Now the effect images are just flat 2D images and facing the front the whole time. The third option is stretched. Now each effect image is stretched and faces its moving direction. Click here to select the layer and for my artwork, I prefer to use billboard, so I will switch back to that one. To finish off, I will rename this layer by clicking here. I always try to name my layers, to be able to find them easier when I have multiple. Let's name this one Sparkles, and that was the final step of my first effect layer. Moving forward, let's create the clouds. Click on the effect icon up here. From the templates, I will select Smoke this time. This already looks something like a cloud, but let's customize the settings a bit. This time I will start with the rate over time, meaning how many effect images are spawned per second. Let's type 100 and notice the difference to our effect layer. For the effect that I am looking for this looks too dense, so I will change back the value to something lower, for example 20. Let's look at the different shapes, that means the shape in which the effect layers will be spawned. Choose the cone and notice the shape in my scene. If I select the point, the images are spawned at one point in space. Let's go back to the edge shape because it is the best for the effect that I am looking for. Now let's change the color. Click on the color here and I will choose something more grayish as I want this to be a rainy cloud. 
I will make the shape length longer by dragging here next to it. I would like it to be similar size to the width of my target image, so something like that looks okay. Again on the bottom, you have advanced settings but for this layer, I do not want to change any of those. Let's just rename this layer by clicking here. I will call it cloud. This is our second effect layer finished. Let's move forward to the next one. Our third effect layer will be the rain. Click on the templates and select rain. I will just move it a bit up, close to the cloud so it looks like it is raining. Let's resize the shape length to match the length of the cloud. Somewhere around here looks fine. And now let's move to another setting that we have not spoken about, and that is the speed. The speed as it suggests is the speed of each effect image. I will go into details a bit later on. But now let's also change the color to something more grayish. Click on select. Now the rain color matches the clouds. The raindrops look a bit too big for my scene. So by going to start size I will change the first value to 0.02. Notice how immediately the effect images get smaller. As I mentioned before we have two values to make the effect more diverse. So the second value I will change to 0.1. Now I can also change the rate over time value as it might be easier to see the difference than when I changed it for the cloud. I will just scroll a bit closer to see it better. To finish off, I will also rename this layer to rain. Now I will create our final effect layer to finish the rain. This time, from the templates, select ripples. And that would be the rain ripples hitting the floor. By clicking the rotation here on the top, I will rotate this layer horizontally in our scene just click and drag the red line of the gizmo up or down, depending how you want to position it. I will also change the shape size from here. I will click and drag next to X value, also next to the Y value. And the Z value may be somewhere around here. I still want to change the rotation a little bit again by dragging the red line of the gizmo. Now click on the move tool up here to move the layer. I will position it here on the bottom where I would like the floor to be. Let's change the shape size X value a little bit more just so to match the length of the clouds and the rain. And finally, I will change the color of the rain ripples also to something darker to match the whole scene. Let's rename this one to rain ripples, and this is our whole rain effect done. For the final part of this tutorial, I will create the fire and the fire embers. I will start off by hiding the current effect layers. Just click on the eye icon here. I am doing that so my scene is clean and it will be easier to see how the layer changes while I am editing the settings. I will add an effect layer from here. We do have pre-made templates for these effects, but I will recreate them from scratch just to be able to go through some more of the settings in detail. I will start by finding a better effect image from here. Those are all the image textures available for now. For the flames, I think this one looks the best. The next thing I would like to change is the shape. Right now we have a sphere, and I think for the fire effect, I will choose a different one. Click on the drop-down icon here. Going through the menu, I think the point will be the best as the flames will come from a certain point in our case. Notice how the shape changed. Let's just move it a bit forward so we can see it better. I will change the rotation by clicking on the icon up here. I am dragging the red line of the gizmo until the direction of my effect layer is facing up vertically. Now let's change the lifetime value. As I mentioned before this is the active duration of a single effect layer. Right now, it looks like it is too long so let's put 2. It is still too much so I will change it to 1. That already looks better. But let's try and put 2 values so we have a more diverse effect. Click on the drop down icon here and select between 2 values. I will set the first one to 0.5 and the second I will just leave to 1. Now click on the advanced settings and let's look at the effect type. By clicking on the drop down icon I will select billboard. Because for this effect, it has to be facing the camera the whole time. Now I would change the start size. Click again to select between two values. I will leave the first one to be one and for the second, let's try to put a bigger value so we have a bigger diversity. Watch how the effect changes if I put five. Right now, all the effect images are spawned in the same rotation. Let's try to make it look more natural by setting two different values. I would leave the first one to zero. And for the second, I will put 360. Going back to the advanced settings, let's add some colors to our effect. This is the gradient editor. The first color I will add is the yellow. Click here and drag the circle up to this corner. To add a second color, just click here. By default, it will be green. 
The second color will be red. Just drag the circle to somewhere around here, and then drag the inner one to the corner up here. The final color will be black. Click here again, and drag the inner circle to the bottom corner where the black is. You can adjust the colors by dragging them left or right from up here. This already looks pretty close to flames, but there are still a few things that I would edit. Notice up here how this doesn't look too natural. To fix that I would like some fading. I am going to color fading in the advanced settings. In this dialog, you can choose the fading effect. The black is where the color goes transparent. I will select this one because I want it to fade just at the end. Notice how the black fades away now. The next thing I would do is to change the size over lifetime, which means the size of each effect image over its active duration. By clicking here a new dialog will open with different curves. I will select this one and notice how now it starts from zero and gradually goes up to 100%. For me, this does not look the best. So maybe let's try to find a better curve. I will select this one and now it will go from about 50 to 100%, which looks much better. The final thing that I would like to edit is the lifetime rotation, meaning the rotation of each effect image over its active duration. To better explain this, I will open an empty project, add an effect layer, and notice how the heart texture images are spawned in the same rotation the whole time. For the fire, I set the start rotation between two values, 0 and 360. Let's do the same here and notice how each effect image starts at different rotation, between 0 and 360. The lifetime rotation means the rotation of each effect image over its active duration. Let's choose between two values. I will set the first one to minus 80 and the second to plus 80. You will now clearly see in our layer, the effect images are not only spawned at different rotation, but they also rotate from minus 80 to plus 80 until they disappear. Going back to our scene, I will choose between two values in the lifetime rotation. The first one I will set to minus 50 and the second to plus 50. This is the fire effect done. Now I will just position it on top of the fireplace by using the move tool from up here. Here it looks okay. I would also like to scale it down a little. Select the scale icon up here. Just click on the yellow cube in the center of the gizmo and drag up or down. With the move tool, fix the position. Once I am happy with the result, I will just rename this layer to fire. The final step will be to create the fire embers. As I said, we do have a template for it, but I want to create it from scratch so I can clarify a few more settings. Add a new effect layer and position it around the fire. As you can see the effect images are spawned in a sphere. The fire embers should appear around the flames, so a different shape would be more suitable. I will select the cone and rotate it around the fire. I am selecting the rotation tool from up here. I will click and drag the red line of the gizmo until the cone is rotated vertically around the flames. Again using the move tool I will position it a little bit down. Let's select a different effect image. Click on the image here. I would think that the embers have a circular shape, so I will choose this one in the middle. Now as we had for the flames, the effect image type is set to none, so it is not facing the camera. Going into the advanced settings, change the effect type to billboard. Notice how now it is facing the camera, but let's see what will happen if we use stretched for that one. The stretched effect type will reinforce the moving speed feeling of these particles. Right now the effect images look too big, so let's change the start size. To have a more diverse effect, I will choose between two values. I will set the first one to 0, and the second value to 0.5. This already looks much better. The next thing I would like to change is the lifetime. I will type one so that the fire embers will go a little bit over the flames and then disappear. Let's also reduce the shape angle. I will just click and drive on the side of the value field. I will also do the same for the shape radius. That looks okay. I will just move it a bit down. Let's go ahead and set the lifetime color. I will use the same ones as I did for the fire. Again, by clicking on the top to add a new color, and selecting it from the color wheel down here. Let's also add a curve to the size over lifetime. 
Right now it is straight, but let's check what will happen if I select that one for example. You can clearly see that the effect images start from zero, then quickly jump to almost 100 and at the end, they jump back to zero again. That already looks pretty good. But let's click back on the curve image and select that one instead. Now they get smaller more gradually towards the end, which is how I would imagine it to work. The effect images still look a bit too big. So going back to the start size, I will set the second value to 0.3 instead. Now that looks much better. The final thing that I have not mentioned until now is the noise frequency and noise strength. If you would imagine a real campfire, the fire embers do not simply fly up in a straight line. They flicker and tremble left and right. Let's set the noise frequency to 0.5 and the noise strength to 2. Notice how the movement changed and it is not so static anymore. This is the final result. Now I will just rename this layer to Fire Embers, save my artwork and experience it through the Art of Vive app. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you all in my next video.